So, this is Mark Shepard, and I'm here with Mike Donahue, who the other day I saw him do bullying prevention assembly for, I guess it was 7th graders or 8th graders, 7th or 8th graders, and I was absolutely blown away because he was so real with them, and the kids absolutely connected with him and gave him what so many adult speakers don't get <laughs> with 7th and 8th graders, and that is their complete and total attention. And I wanted to have a chance to sit down with you, Mike, to, to, to ask you some questions on a couple of different levels. First, as a parent. Secondly, as you know, someone who's working in schools with kids. Uh, and it seemed to me that one of the, the, the most powerful messages you had for the kids as well as for us adults, parents and teachers and administrators was to be real, to be, you know, heart-centered. And I just wondered if you could just kind of talk a little bit about how you came to that and how you processed through that. Well, for me, it's like, I think we, we talk to kids on two different levels. We talk from the head level, information level, on the heart level. And really, they live in a, in a heart level. They live in that world where that five minutes it takes to get from you know, English to math, that's filled with a lot of drama. I call it a stage. Like It's not really a hallway. It's a stage that they're on, that they have to perform on every day. And it's where their heart is challenged, their values are challenged, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I like to like talk about that part of it because it really engages them into um, you know, into that world. It lets them know that I, I understand that world. And um, then we can get down to business on what's really going on with that. Right, right. How do I put this? It seems like the, the, what you call the, the upper government, the, the school government, wants one message, kind of that top-down message. Right. But to give that message to kids turns them off. So right. you are actually addressing, in a, I thought, really appropriate way, and I thought you gave a lot of respect to the administrators, but you were like, hey, I've got to go down to where these kids are because otherwise they're just going to, you know, see my lips moving and they're not going right. to affect them. It's all about the assimilation. And I think administrators will appreciate it in the long run if you are getting the information assimilated into the kids' lives. It doesn't matter, um, like you said, if you just talk, talk, talking at them, they're not going to assimilate it. It's like, it's like a big piece of meat. If I had a big piece of meat right here and I want to put it in your mouth, right. <clears throat> the meat's good for you. It's very right. good for you. And uh, that's so you need to eat it. But if I don't cut it for you right. and, and fit it to your specific needs, right. then I'm really wasting my time. And that's, teenagers, I spend most of my time figured out how to say it I'm going to say, not what I'm going to say, because what I'm going to say is what everybody's saying. So I just have to figure out a way to cut it so they get it, use some humor, use some stories, and use some things that are going to capture their, you know, their imaginations a little bit. And talk about that real world stuff. Apply it to their lives. Apply it to where they live. And you own it. And to me, being relevant as a, this is in you know you can read this in the book but being relevant is um, answering questions kids are asking and you, as a communicator we have to be students of what they're asking right. we're not asking folks to bad for them we're not asking to give you all the stats on bullying you know, right, 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 right. but they are asking how do I treat people how do I how do I respond when somebody, one of my friends, is being picked on? Right? Right. You know, uh, what is it like to walk in somebody else's shoes that's different than me? You know, how do I treat that person with respect, even though they're allowed to have it? Right. You know, so that, that kind of thing. We answer those questions. And, uh, I'm, I'm curious as a presenter, what? I know there was a purpose for absolutely everything you did. And yes, we are at Starbucks, by the way. So hopefully you can hear us. Um, <laughs> You opened your program. I was so impressed. I was like, huh? You you asked the kids, do you want something funny or do you want me to get serious right away? And of course they go, oh, we want something funny. And then you pushed a button and you played some funny videos of people falling over and making fools of themselves. And then you walked up the center of the aisle and you literally left the room. I'm like, how cool is that? <laughs> What got you to do that? What was what was your purpose behind that? I'd love to, to the, the, find it. the funny stuff at the beginning. Yeah. Well, because they don't trust, they don't know me, they don't trust me yet. So if I don't establish some kind of a rapport with them right away, 
uh, then when I do get serious, I don't have that same credibility. So that first 10 minutes is earning the right to be heard. Right. And, you know, you do that when you have a relationship with somebody, you, you do that just by, you know, your relational skills and, and you know, listening to them and that kind of thing. But I don't have that luxury. I have, I have an hour right. to, to get something across that room. So the first 10 minutes has to be... And, and I want it to be abrupt, too, because I, don't, I want it to go against the grain. Because when they come into an assembly program, they're used to getting there, getting some PowerPoint presentation and all these things. And, and so I, so right away I go funny, um, and then I get them off guard, and then and then I go right to the heart. Right. So then when I start my serious part of it, I go right to my personal story with you know growing up in a dysfunctional home, and, and I kind of walk them through what it was like you know for them. And so they, I grab them right away because I went funny, now I'm going kind of sad. Right. So I'm going from one end of the spectrum to the other, and right. on emotions, and, right. and then I can go ahead for a while, you know, go informational, then go back to funny, go back to you know, so I kind of switch up. It's not just funny at the beginning, as you know. I mean, threw some one-liners in the middle of it just to keep their right. keep them off guard. Right. Right. And I'm, I'm curious, how is that? I mean, have you had administrators or teachers go, huh? What's this? Have you? Yeah, but most of them get it. You know, I mean, yeah, I've had some people walk out, and, and I used to used to be a little bit more. Um, I walked the edge a little bit, a little, a little closer, and then, so we just learned that like you can still do that without being too offensive. You know, I mean, we dance the line a little bit, the funny jokes, I have them yell out what's on their mind, usually they yell out sex, and, you know, whatever. Then you just kind of jump on the whole guy girl, you know, thing is right, different. Right, yeah, that is that. Is, I love the way you set that up because it, it is almost like you have to at some point acknowledge that guys and girls are different. Yes, people, guys and girls are different. You know, this yeah. is like that. This is fun. That funny so that's, that's the bottom line for that is just to, you, you do get some administrators that get a little, I had something happen to me a couple of years ago though. One of the administrators came up to me, he was a principal, and he asked me to talk to him after he was in his office. And he's, he was really offended by some of the, some of the, how close I got to the line. And so I was asking him questions, like, oh, tell me, tell me what offended you. And so he went into some of it, and you know, it might have been, you know, legitimate. And I've listened to that criticism, because I, because I do, I do understand that, you know, I, I don't want to get better, I want to tweak it, and, and right. if I can stay close to the line without... Well, about three months later, I saw him at a conference, and he came up to me and apologized to me. And he said, he said, you know what? That was the most talked about assembly after, that we've ever had, and the most effective assembly we've ever had. So he goes, now I, I understand your logic on that. But, but he helped me, too, because right. I, I did oh, yeah. adjust my game. Yeah, I had a similar experience, as I was mentioning to you before. I had an administrator who just wasn't getting what I was doing. And I am I'm really open to feedback. And I said to her, you know... I really get that you're not liking what I did. Um, what could I do better? She says, I don't know, you're the expert. Like, oh, okay. But it wasn't until the end of my parents' program, she was like, oh, I get it. Um, and I thought it was really big of her to admit it. That's cool. To yeah. really come to it. And and I think, I think that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen in... For me, I use all my bullying prevention stuff, my internal management skills, to be clear with her, to not be um, intimidated by her, to not be upset even. I was like, you know, it, it energized me, whereas in the past it would have crushed me. Right. Um, so I was like, well, at least my stuff's working for me. <laughs> you know, like, I wish I could have shared it more with the kids, but she cut me off. You know? Okay, but, but next time we'll find a way. Yeah. And I think what... What the line we walk is to provide enough real substance and meat in that one hour right. so that we're not just a fluff motivational speaker. We're, we're someone who's actually has the ability, because we're outsiders, we can come in yeah. and give some something that the people that the kids are in touch with every day can't give. Right. And it's just that, that line. You know, and I thought you did it really brilliant. Um, you know, if you're watching this, if you're someone who books bullying prevention speakers, I'd love it if you booked me, but book him. Book him and then have me come after him because he's a tough act to follow. I'll just come and sing some songs, okay? <laughs> 
So, Mike, I want to thank you. Do you have anything else you want to say that you know that maybe you want to get out to administrators, parents, even kids that that might be watching this interview? Well, I think the, the big thing for me is is challenging kids on a heart level. You know, going after you know where they really live and being a student of that. And the, the best way to do that, whether an administrator, a parent, a kid's friend, whatever, listen, listen. You know, the more you listen. It educates you, it helps you, it communicates a message to them, obviously, that what they're feeling on the inside is valid and valuable, but also it helps you as a, as a, as a, you know, as a friend, as a, you know, as a parent or whatever, it helps you be able to empathize and, and absorb, you know, where they're, where they're working. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you, Mike Donahue and Mark Shepard, and uh, thank you again for watching this, and hopefully you'll get something out of this so that you can listen to that important person in your life or to the important kids in your life and uh, really be real for them. I mean, that's the message I took away from Mike's presentation and, and hopefully you'll get that message somehow, some way as well because I think really that's what kids want. And I think they're just so yearning for them. Yeah, they're ready. Um, and uh, so thanks again. Yeah, thanks, right. thanks a lot.